From Genesis to Revelation, there are around 100 statements where God the Father, alone, unaccompanied by himself, is the creator. Genesis 1.27, so God created mankind in his own image, in the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. This is the book of the generations of Adam. In the day that God created man, he made him in his own likeness. Surprisingly, some Trinitarian scholars agree that only one divine person is the Genesis creator. Dr. Michael Heiser in his book, The Unseen Realm notes, Genesis 1.27 tells us clearly that only God himself does the creating. In the Hebrew, all the verbs of creation in the passage are singular in form. The other members of the council do not participate in the creation of humankind. They watch, just as they did when God laid the foundations of the earth. And then Dr. Heiser quotes from Job chapter 38. Then the Lord answered Job from the whirlwind, Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? as the morning stars sang together and all the angels shouted for joy. The Old Testament prophets continued this use of single verbs in relation to the Genesis creation. For example, Isaiah 40 verse 22, he rolled open the skies like a piece of cloth. He stretched out the skies like a tent to sit under. Isaiah 42 verse five, the Lord, the true God said these things, he created the sky and spread it out over the earth. He formed the earth and everything it produced. He breathes life into all the people on earth. He gives a spirit to everyone who walks on the earth. Isaiah 44, verse 24, I am Yahweh who made everything, who stretched out the heavens by myself, who alone spread out the earth. The pulpit commentary notes on this verse that God did not delegate the creation of the heaven and the earth to an inferior spirit as the Greeks generally taught. He did not even call in the cooperation of a helper. Singly and solely by his own power, he created all things. The Moody Bible commentary on the same verse, God's proclamation begins with the assertion, I, the Lord, am the maker of all things and continues with the declaration identifying God's activities as including stretching out the heavens by myself and spreading out the earth all alone. God's acts of creation were comprehensive, meaning that no other God created anything. God created alone. He needed no help in stretching out the heavens or spreading out the earth. He brought it about by his power alone. No God stood before God against God or with God in the formation of the world. The point here is that in Isaiah 44, verse 24, God acts alone using no agent whatsoever. No other type of being that is an angel, a little g God, or another God, capital G, was ever involved in the Genesis creation. This was the revelation from Moses to the prophets to Jesus to Paul. In Deuteronomy 32 verse 6, Moses says, Israel, the Lord is your father, the one who created you. The prophet Malachi in chapter 2 verse 10 says, Have we not all one father? Has not one God created us? And Jesus says in Luke 10 verse 21, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. The same in Matthew 11, verse 25. And Paul verifies the same revelation of only one creator when he says in 1 Corinthians 8, 6, we, that is us Christians, have only one God and he is the Father. Jewish scholar Payne, in his critical history of the evolution of Trinitarianism, rightly notes that there's no break between the Old and New Testaments. The monotheistic tradition is continued. Jesus was a Jew trained by Jewish parents in the Old Testament scriptures. His teaching was Jewish to the core, a new gospel indeed, but not a new theology. Other scholars, 
who happened to be Trinitarian, perhaps unknowingly buffered this point. Robert Bowman, in his book, Putting Jesus in His Place, admits that it's true that the New Testament never says that all things are from, using the Greek preposition ek, the Son. In a footnote, Bowman also admits that the New Testament does not provide compelling evidence for hard and fast distinctions in the roles of the Father and the Son in creation. Yet, the few passages Bowman and other pre-existence proponents use as proof texts seem to undermine the view that the Son had any involvement, any role in the Genesis creation. For example, the writer to the Hebrews opens his letter saying that in the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in many ways. In these last days, God has spoken to us in a son whom God has appointed heir of all things through whom also God made the ages. The clear implication here is that there was no son in the past that is, in the Old Testament times. The one God spoke through the ancestors, that is, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and prophets like Moses, David, at many times and in many different ways. And all things, says the writer, which include obviously the Genesis creation, were created by God, that is, through the Son, not by the Son. These New Testament Jewish writers understood the Old Testament principle that the one God created the world through, in, or for the Son. As some commentators rightly note, Rabbi Johanan said the world was created for the sake of the Messiah, according to the Abingdon New Testament commentary. Another writer notes, we confess our belief in creation with an eye to Christ, from him we learn the final purpose of creation. Paul similarly in Colossians chapter 1 verse 16 says that in Christ all things were created, that is by God, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created, that is by God, through him and for him, that is the Son of God. The noted British scholar Bishop N.T. Wright in his commentary on Colossians notes that the passive phrase were created indicates in a typically Jewish fashion the activity of God the Father working in the Son to say by the Son that is could imply not that Christ is the Father's agent but that he was alone responsible for creation. In other words, God's original Genesis creation act depended causally on the Son. Apart from the Son, there would have been no creation at all. As a result, note Paul's final claim in Colossians 1 verse 16 that all things have been created, that is, by God, through the Son, and for the Son. The dictionary of Paul and his letters notes that the phrase may also echo elements of Jewish tradition where Israel or the elect are referred to as the ones for whom God created the world. And then they provide the following extra biblical references in the book of Ezra and the Testament of Moses. Lastly, what did Jesus have to say about this issue? In Matthew 19 verse four, Jesus ascribes the original Genesis creation to someone other than himself by saying, have you not read that the one who made them at the beginning made them male and female? Mark 10 verse six, but from the beginning of the creation, he made them male and female. So what did Jesus say? We made them male and female? Of course not. Jesus said he made them male and female. 